Hi everyone, my name is Sophie. I'm gonna wait a few more seconds for people to join in and we're gonna start with the questions. I hope you're all doing well during this quarantine. I just got to LA like two days ago. Um, just, you know, to be here in my last quarter at UCLA, just in my apartment doing work. Um, it's been pretty chill. I've been with my roommate, just doing work. Um, but it's been fine. Um, so I'm gonna introduce myself again. My name's Sophie. I'm a fourth year political science major and I'm a first gen student here at UCLA. And I'm gonna start with the poli-sci related questions. So first, a lot of people asked, um, can you still graduate in four years with a minor? Um, so I'm minoring in chicken egg studies and I'm majoring in political science. And yes, it's, what's, it's actually recommended for political science majors to double, my, double major or minor or even double minor because the policy major is so short that you need more classes for it. So I could have graduated in three years, but I just decided to space out my classes. So that's why I'm graduating in four years. So it's completely doable, super easy. Um, it's poli -sci. Um, So it's poli -sci manageable as a quarter system? Absolutely. So as I mentioned, poli -sci is really short. So you can double minor, double major. And if you want, you can graduate in three years. You just have to take some extra classes so four classes a quarter, which is completely doable, and a lot of people do it. How did UCLA help in the pre-law realm? Um, well, UCLA has a lot of resources for students looking for pre-law, especially because we have one of the top 15 law schools. So I would recommend a lot of people work in the UCLA law school. There's a lot of jobs for undergrad students. You can work in the law library. You can work as like a clerk, there's IT for UCLA Law. And the perks of that, even though it's not like an internship or you don't do a lot of like law related stuff, um, you can meet professors, you can meet a lot of lawyers that work there that can help you. They're like really helpful and they answer all of your questions and just give you resources that you need. Um, also, there's this program called Law Fellows that a lot of my friends are in and you have to apply for that program and it's it's kind of competitive, but it's really, really worth it. There's also a lot of people asked what kind of internships I found being an undergrad, because a lot of people just hire law students for firms and things like that. I use Handshake. So it's just like, it's like a LinkedIn profile, but it's catered for UCLA. And you put in all your preferences. So like part-time job, like I'm an undergrad student, you put your GPA and like your resume kind of thing. And there's so many jobs you can apply to, like so many jobs. And that's how I found a lot of the things I did at UCLA. Um, the job I'm in right now for entertainment law, I actually got through my fraternity. So a lot of people in it just like kind of passed down the job. Um, I'm going to get to it a little later. Um, so how useful is poli sci for pre-law? Um, I think it's really useful because you, you get to keep up with like current events. And for a lot of like law related like positions, for example, you do like immigration law or like international law, it's really, really helpful for poli sci, especially because poli sci lets you choose your concentration. So I'm doing a concentration in international relations. So all the classes I take help me with what I want to do later in life. So I just learn about all the current events, everything that's happened around the world and not just like in America. Um, how does it relate to my entertainment law firm job? Policy, the content I learned doesn't really help me in that, but someone asked, do you write a lot of essays? Absolutely. I think that's like the one thing you do the most is just write essays all the time. And it's actually like, you get pretty used to it. It's not that hard. I would just recommend that you take your time and don't start writing like week 10 when it's due. Cause then like, it actually gets really, really hard. But when you start working out like a law firm one day, like ask you to write and like draft agreements and papers, you're used to the type of writing that they want and the wording of it all. So that's what I found really helpful. Um, resources for first years looking into law. Um, so for me, the best thing I did my freshman year was going to the poli sci department with the advisors. 
and they were actually really helpful in like planning out your classes and like telling you what you need to do so if you go to your advisors like don't pass out on that opportunity if you're not a film student um yeah i'll get to other majors in a second um do you recommend do you connect policy to different roles of law Definitely, as I said, like you can choose your concentration. So if you want to do like politics, you can go into American politics. If you want to do international law, there's a lot of great classes for that as well. And it just connects. Um, can you do other majors if you want to go into law or which are recommended? You can do absolutely any major to get into law school. Like it does not matter at all. A lot of people choose policy because it's, it's kind of easy. It just helps you a lot with like current knowledge and things about the world. So, but you can do any major, absolutely any major, even in my pre-law frat, we're not all poli-sci majors. So, but if anyone that's looking for the pre-law track, what I would recommend is just studying for the LSAT. Starting like your third year, it doesn't have to be immediately, but you wanna get familiar with the concept and like what they're gonna ask you. So that's also what law fellows is for. So, as I mentioned before, UCLA offers this program. Yes, you got to apply to it, but it's really helpful to apply your sophomore, junior year, and they help you with LSAT, essays for your law school, and everything like that. It's a great UCLA program. Um, for poli sci majors, also, if you're looking for pre law and politics, they have this program called UCDC. So you can do it in the fall or in the spring. You also have to apply for it. But you go to, you study abroad in Washington for a quarter and you do your own research and get to meet like politicians and go just, it's an amazing program. And you get a lot of connections if you want to really work in politics in the future or just law in general. What G's did I take or have for poli sci? So as every major, like you have GE requirements that are history, there's history, there's diversity, all these GEs that you have to take. Um, but they give you a lot of options for every G you have to take. So, for example, if you have to take a diversity requirement, you literally have like 100 classes you can take for that one requirement. So it's up to you what you find more interesting. And that's what other people also decide to change their majors. Because they took a GE they really, really liked and decided to change or double major in that. So just have fun with G's, explore them, just take different classes, and it can be like really, really fun. Um, let's see. So, okay, I got a lot of questions about the fraternity I'm in. So just like an overview, a professional fraternity, it's similar to the process of a social, like Greek life social fraternity or sorority in that you need to rush for like three, four days, and then you get into like screening process, and then if they choose you, you have to pledge for a quarter. The benefits of this is that you have other people in the frat that are literally mostly your same major, because a lot of people are, as I mentioned, like poli sci, but there's also sociology majors and all, all kinds of like variety. But the thing is like, since I'm poli sci and most of the people are too, most of my classes I was able to take with my friends and people in the frat, so it's just a really nice thing to be able to study together and, you know, just have someone there for you, too. When do you plan on taking the LSAT and applying to law school? Um, so I'm taking a gap year. I'm trying to work for the next year while I study for the LSAT. So I plan to take the LSAT not this June or September, but next June or September, I'll be taking the LSAT. So I'm taking, it is really recommended for you to take a year or two before law school, after undergrad, to work, get some experience, and just like get that break from school. So it's really recommended that you just take a break and be able to like focus on yourself for a little bit, travel, and just take your time studying for the LSAT. Um, is the pre-law frat worth it? And how is it financially? So professional fraternities cannot really charge you that much. I think they have to cap it at like around 200, $250 a quarter. So it's really financially, it's not that, like, it's not that much money. And also they have programs that can help you if you're struggling, which can be like paying like half dues or like having like a payment plan. So it's really not that financially 
hard. So it's really nothing compared to like fraternities or sororities that like, as you can like imagine from like movies and stuff, like they are really expensive, but it's financially really okay. And I think it is really worth it because compared to like, like someone asks what's the difference between like social life and a professional fraternity. And I think the difference is that we have a lot of workshops. We meet with lawyers. We're able to like have a, they pair you with a mentor so you can have like a different perspective or experience of someone that already went through everything you're going through. So I got a mentor that's also doing entertainment law and she is a law student. So she's really helping me with the whole process. So being in a fraternity can really help you make connections and have people that can guide you through the process. Did I rush my first year? No, I actually rushed my second year in college just because I felt like I needed to settle first and find my place at UCLA where I felt comfortable enough to join a different organization. A lot of people I know though do rush their first year and I would actually, well, I, would, I wouldn't have just because I was able to join other clubs and orgs before this, but my best friends I made in my fraternity. And I just feel like I can still keep in touch with them and like be closer to them because we take the same classes and are going the same path. Um, yeah, you do have to rush. So there's two professional fraternities at UCLA and one has rush. So mine does rush fall, spring, and I think the other one does fall, winter. So there's always an opportunity to rush a professional fraternity. The process is very similar, um, but they're just two different ones. And if you don't really want to um, rush or be in a fraternity, there's a lot of other resources for pre-law students. There's the pre-law society, which is, it's very similar to what we do, but it's just like, a club, it's like more informal. You can go to events even though you don't like, like you're not part of it or pay any dues. And it's more open to the public. Like we're also invited to their events. So it's more of like, it's for everyone and you can go to their events. Um, there's also the, there's one specifically for transfers, the transfers um, pre-law society that you can join as well. They have really good um, programs and they just last year they just popped off and started do, like bringing people and lawyers and like entertainment stars and it, it's it's really cool there's also one especially for latinx people um it's also open for everyone so it's a latinx pre-law society so there's a lot of clubs on campus that you can get involved with if you don't want to be in an actual like fraternity um am i in the frat until the end yeah so i'm so once you join a fraternity, you're in it until you graduate, unless you decide otherwise. But if you like it and you stay in it, then you're just in. There's certain requirements. This is a professional fraternity that you have to like keep doing. So we do like philanthropy, brotherhood, and professionalism. So they help. You, like what we do is we help with like resumes, interview skills, and everything that's gonna help you. We also have like LSAT workshops and like things we can focus on. We have like alumni come in and talk to us about their experience if we need any help and we like keep in touch with them and they're really reachable and like as i said some of them are our mentors so they're really reachable and it's a network that i really value what extra opportunities so they give us like discount codes for our lsat and they like cater to our fraternity whatever like we need and they give us like also like quarterly workshops, they just come and like help us. Um, as I mentioned, we also have like our mentors that were part of the frat and are like in law school. Um, a lot of the people that were in this fraternity that are fourth years this year that are going directly to law school um, got accepted into Harvard Law, Berkeley Law, UCLA Law, U Chicago, like really good universities. Um, and I think it's not just obviously because of the frat, I think having a very, like a strong GPA really helps. So you should also keep in mind that you need to stay on top of it. Like your GPA does matter, not as much the LSAT, but it's good to like, if you choose like policy and like a minor, just stay on top of it and have like a strong GPA because it's like really strong. Like it's really convenient to have it for law school. Um, what ex I think even though it is a professional fraternity, I think what I value the most it's like the people I've met because they're all doing things that like I probably wouldn't know about. 
Um, for example, there's like this Harvard program that you get to go over the summer, I believe, um, and you can apply as a second year. It's for second year students, so you can also look into that. It's like a Harvard program, it's a fellows program, and it's obviously it's from Harvard Law School, so it's like really helpful for you to just stay in touch with them and make connections. I think the most important thing for a policy major is to make connections and like talk to your professors, go to their office hours, talk to the policy advisors, because these are people that know about, about policy. Most of them like also thought of or went to law school and do really good research. What I've like also found really good in the policy department is the seminars. So as a, even the second year, but mostly third and fourth years, take seminars with professors and do actual research with them. So I was recently in a class where we polled people and did research on city politics, because I'm interested in politics as well. So you help the professor in his actual research and you get to be hands on and not just like study from the book. So you get to like test theories and just be more personal with the professor in terms of like, oh, maybe like later you can get a letter of rec or you just wanted to learn more about a topic. Um, so what's, what's the rush process like for a frat, for like a pre-law frat? It's usually three days of meeting all the active members of the fraternity. So you get to meet them, talk to them to see if like you think you're going to be a good fit. Um, so usually like they're really outgoing, but anything goes. Like if you think you like the members and you want to give it a shot, like absolutely go for it. It's really, really fun. After that, you have like coffee chats and you just like, talk to them and like get to be yourself a little more because the pressure of the first stage is it's already gone so you can talk to them and be more open about you and like your opinions and theories and then you just get a pledge and it's really fun you're you bond with your like pledge brothers a lot and you still get to learn that's when they pretty much form you to be an active so you get to like build your resume learn how to like interview and all like the basic skills you need to get like a job in the future. How selective is it? Um, I would say it, it really depends when you rush and how many people rush. It's like really inclusive. The whole like pre-law realm at UCLA is really, really inclusive. Like a lot of people do it. Each quarter, I would say it's around 15 to 20 people that I get to pledge. So it's like a, a pretty small amount, but it really depends on how many people go. Yes, yes, I would love to be pledge sisters. That would be really cool. Um, so hit me up if you, if you want more information about the frat. Um, it's really fun, it was one of my best experiences. Um, for first-gen students, what opportunities is there for first-gen students? Um, I don't really know a lot about this, but I do know um, I follow UCLA underscore first gen. They have so many resources coming from like opportunities, financial questions, um, even like gatherings and like social opportunities for you to meet like other first gen students. So you can follow UCLA first gen on Instagram and they answer, they, they also have Q and A's, like live Q and A's and just a lot of resources that can help you with it. Yeah, so as I said, if you follow them, um, UCLA First Gen, you're gonna you're gonna see all the resources they have. Like it's a really nice community when they also have mentors and they can guide you exactly through what you need to do. Um, how has being a Latinx brewing impacted me at UCLA? Um, so as a first gen like Latinx student, I come from a really small hometown, so my graduating class was actually of sixty four people. So coming to UCLA in such like a big environment was really, like it really shocked me at first. So that's why I needed a little time to like settle in before I like rushed or anything. Cause it was like a really, really big change. Um, but like surprisingly, well, we're in LA. So there's a lot of like, there's a big Latinx community and there's so many clubs and orgs that are really inclusive and just help you like manage your whole like identity and like if you struggle to like know where you fit in there's so many clubs my only recommendation is like put yourself out there like when i rushed this frat i also put myself out of my comfort zone so i did things that i didn't really necessarily want to do but i did anyways and 
did not regret it at all so just like put yourself out there join clubs meet a lot of people i'm telling for me connections was, was one of the most important things i did just meeting people and being able to rely on them professors classmates tas anything that can help you through the process because as a first gen student like it's obviously sometimes really hard to know where to go and like what to do but I, like i'm saying like as soon as i got to ucla i reached out to the policy counselors and they really helped me just plan out my classes, what I had to do so I wouldn't lose my track if I wanted to go to law school. So that was pretty nice. Um, what else? Oh, another, another good resource for people that are asking how do you get like internships or just jobs as an undergrad student, UCLA also has this really cool program that they work with Justice Corps. And it's you work at a... Um, at the UC, oh, at the Los Angeles like courthouse or Santa Monica, wherever like it's more convenient for you, and you work with actual cases, helping people that need it, and you get like a stipend at the end. So for some time, like you don't get paid, but I think the experience is super valuable, and you can continue doing it over the years, and then you can get a fellowship there, like after you graduate. So that's like a really cool resource too, and you have to apply, but it's really like a, most people get in, and it's like you help people that have no money to get real representation. So that's just something I would recommend you do. What kind of work are you planning to do over my gap year? So I'm gonna, what I'm planning on doing is either keep working at a law firm as well, but I wanna work in something that's not entertainment law just, cause be, just because I want to like explore different areas of law that I haven't. So I'm looking for something in international relations, international law, because that was one of my favorite classes at UCLA. So I want to like explore different things before I settle on something I want to do in law school. Um, so a reasonable amount of clubs to be, I would say to be really involved in three or four that you're like really, really involved in. But you can be in like many clubs and just like, pop into some meetings and just learn about them and just stick to the three, four you like the most, two or three. So I recommend LLCs. Um, I was never in one. Some of my friends were and they really enjoyed it. Um, but you still, you don't have to be part of the LLC to participate in their events. So for those that don't know, LLCs are the living learning communities and so for, there's a Latinx next floor that's located in Sproul Hall in one of the buildings, but you don't have to be part of their program to like go to their events. Like I went to some of their events and I wasn't in it. So everything on the hill is pretty much open to everyone. So you don't have to be part of anything. But like a lot of my friends really liked it. They met a lot of their friends there and they're still friends now. So if you feel like you're looking for that like familiar environment, I would recommend it. So I recommend clusters. Oh, so in LLC, as I mentioned, the learning, living, like, community. So it's, like, a whole floor dedicated to, like, Latinx students or first-gen students. So students with, like, your same experience or, like, your same background will be, like, in the same floor. Um, do I recommend clusters? I took a cluster my freshman year. So a cluster is a class you take for the three quarters your freshman year, so three quarters straight, and they focus on a specific subject. I took one and I I wasn't sure at first, but I really liked it because it took care of a lot of GEs that I didn't have to take later on. So it's actually pretty, pretty useful. So I would recommend it. I think it was pretty fun and I got rid of a lot of GEs. So yeah, go for it. Um, high school juniors looking to go into pre-law. Um, I say focus on your essays, your essays to go to, um, to apply to UCLA. Um, there's not nothing specific you have to take to get into like the pre-law major, especially like as a high school student. I think just keep up your GPA and really focus on those like admission personal statements. I think that was like the most important thing. Uh, a pre-law frat. Do you live in a frat house? No, professional fraternities do not have a frat house. I do live with three of my fraternity sisters. So we all live in the apartment together, but we don't have a house. None of the professional fraternities do. Um, a lot of us live together in different apartments, but we have no house. Are clusters more difficult? 
Um, no, not really. You just have to take them for longer, but they're really not harder than like another class. It's probably a little more work, so the workload might be a little bit heavier, but it's totally manageable, like 100%. Did I so did you take any classes before you came? Um if you mean like if I went to like community college to take classes before like when I was in high school, no. I did not. Um to UCLA. I came in as a freshman, but I didn't take any classes before. Like I just did my normal like high school. I did I just took like my AP classes, but I didn't take anything else. I wasn't Oh, okay, I know what you mean. Um, no, I didn't take, I didn't go to, like, the summer programs, but I highly recommend them, though. I think, like, going to, like, the summer before, I don't remember, FSB, the freshman summer program, I think it's really good to come in, to go before you come into UCLA, just because you get to acclimate yourself better, get a sense of the classes, and meet more people before actually coming to UCLA. So I think it's a great opportunity. I didn't do it because I really didn't know about it, like, somehow I missed it, so I didn't do FSP. But I think it's really helpful. So you have to pay fees. Yes, you do. So you pay. So as I said, for professional fraternities, the most you will ever pay a quarter is like 200, 250. For us, it's 120. So the fees are really not high. It's really manageable, but you do have to pay each quarter. But as I mentioned before, there's a lot of like financial opportunities if you're not able to pay. So you can do payment plans, like reduction fees and all that kinds of stuff. Like they're really accommodating and helpful if you're struggling or need some help. But yeah, you do have to pay. What do you know about the honors program? I do not know much about that at all, but I can come back to you on that and you can ask more, email us for more questions and the website I'm gonna give you at the end and some other person can help you with that. Because I am really not sure. Um, do, what do I enjoy most about the frat? Um, I think it's just the people I've met. Honestly, being able to like have them in my classes and like be able to work together for classes and just like the knowledge and see what they're doing and how they can help me and I can help them. Especially like later on with our networking. I think that's the thing that like, I value the most. My favorite part about living on campus. <laughs> so um, I lived in River Vista in Saxon. So my first two, I lived on campus for three years. So River Vista, I think it was really nice. People say, so it's a plaza and people say it's not as social for first years as like a, um, as other dorms with like shared bathrooms. So, cause this, for communal bathrooms, because I had a shared bathroom only with the room next to me. So people say it's not as social as it could be for a first year, but I th I think it was perfect. Like the amount of people there, like your RAs, the people that like monitor your floors, did a lot of programs for us. And I had, to, like, I got to meet a lot of people. So I don't think you have to be in like a very social floor to make friends. If you just like go out to the programs and just like talk to your neighbors, I think like that's more than enough. And it was really nicely located because it has like one of my favorite dining halls right across from it, which is like rendezvous. It has like Asian food and Mexican food on like different sides of it. So it was like really convenient to just be like in front of it. And for Saxon, um, so these are like the suites. It has like its own living room outside like the two rooms. Um, but I would recommend, like I know you like don't really get to choose at the end, but it's mostly like athletes junior, so it's like really less social. Nobody really talks to like the neighbors and stuff. So it's, it's, it's less social. Like there's not a lot of people that like go out to the events and stuff. So I wouldn't like super recommend it for like first years. Um, so I lived on the hill for three years because they give you three year guaranteed housing. Um, currently they're working on more or more housing right now that's being built. Um, so they're trying to guarantee four years of housing. I cannot like promise that as of now, but it's very likely that you'll get more years of guaranteed housing. Oh, no worries. Um, well, I lived in the hill for three years just because I liked the hill a lot. Like the dining hall, the food was just like really, really great. And I'm not, I don't have like the greatest cooking skills. So I didn't think moving to an apartment would be a great idea. 
Um, but now that I am living in an apartment, I think it like it works out fine. Like I learned how to cook because I had to. Um, and it's actually like better. The walk to campus is like 15 minutes tops. So it's really not bad. Um, so there's like 11, 14 and 19 regular NP. The most common one is 14 P. So the P meaning your swipes can roll over from week to week. So that's the most common 14 P. Um, but the 19 P meal plan is just like a hundred dollars more per quarter and gives you like five extra swipes a week. So I think it's really worth it to have 19 P even though 14 P is the most common. Um, do you know anything about film and music majors for many people who go there? Um, yeah, a lot of people in media team are, or like a couple of people are film majors. Um, if you have any specific questions, let me know. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of people on the team that can help you with any of your questions. Just let me know if you have anything specific you want to ask. Um, what else do we have here? Mm. How early do you start prepping with, for a law career? So I say like get familiar with the law career in general since the beginning. So just get familiar and like make a plan for yourself. You don't necessarily have to like start like studying, but definitely get familiar with what the LSAT is, when do they offer it, what workshops can you take, and your junior year, like early junior year, start studying for it, and like see what opportunities they have. Um, for example, the frat, we get like um, help with like how to pay for it and stuff like that. So just start prepping and get familiar with it since your freshman year, but I say like the beginning of your junior year, it's when it starts to get like crucial. The new 11p option yeah of course um so 11p is the same as like 14 or 19p but you only get what is it swipes well you get 11 swipes a week but if you don't finish your 11 swipes in the week they roll over to the next week so you get next week you get your 11 swipes plus the ones you didn't use so it's like really convenient if you go home a lot and you don't like use a lot of your swipes for the week so they can just roll over and you don't waste a lot of them and it's like cheaper than the other options. So if you go home a lot and don't really like eat much in the dining halls, I think it's like a good choice. The IDS major. I don't know a lot about the major. Um, it's definitely good for law school as well. Like I have friends that are going to law school with that major. I don't know the specifics of it, but definitely I think it involves more econ than it does like more like current news it's like kind of both it's like poli sci and econ combined so it's like a lot it's very different from poli sci obviously but i don't know the specifics of the major um can you bring other people to your dorm that don't go to the school yes you can um so they allow visitors after 9 p.m some buildings have a code um like access control so you have to sign them in so they have like a visitors and like they make sure you know that you're responsible for your friend or any visitor you're bringing. Um, but yeah, yeah, you definitely can. What do you think about sociology and public affairs as majors? Um, sociology and public affairs are actually great majors. The public affairs majors just became a major. I wanted to double major in it when I was a sophomore, I believe, but they didn't have it available. So now that the option is there, definitely go for it. Sociology, also I know a lot of people because sociology also helps you a lot with your writing and like how the brain works and all the stuff like that. So if you want to get like good at writing, I think sociology is like a great major for law school. As I said, like it doesn't really matter what major you do as long as you like are sure like you can manage it and like be able to get like good grades for it. But any major is really good. Public affairs, absolutely go for it. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Oh, that's a good one. It says, how did your parents feel when I first moved out? So as a first gen student, I feel like I'm also like an only child. So parents, it was like really hard for me to leave. But like I tried to like keep in contact with them. Like I miss them a lot. So I just like text them and like just keep in touch. Like I don't want to distance myself like so much from them, especially since like as a senior, I don't go home a lot and I'm probably just going to stay here after grad. So like take care of your like family and your connections and just like don't lose that special bond you have with your family. Is there a difference between Fiat Lux and clusters? Yes. Um, the difference like a Fiat Lux 
you only take it for one quarter and it's only i think it's like one unit clause so you only get one unit of credit when you take a fiat lux for that one quarter a cluster it's five units per quarter and you have to take it the whole like your whole freshman year as one of your classes so it's a difference in units and the amount of time you have to take it how hard would it be to get into ucla if you graduated high school and taking a break for a year or work um i'm not sure how it impacts you but like i don't know like the chances or statistics about how hard it would get but i think like the application process is the same and like i would say focus on your experiences and like why you took those gap years on your application to like really make you stand out so i don't think it's like a deterrent at all well um, ge's you recommend freshmen um for ge's i would say like i enjoy Personally, I enjoyed history GEs a lot. And you have to take history and diversity. And since they're like easy GEs, I would say, it's just a lot of reading, but they're relatively easy. I think it gives you a chance to like explore the campus and like be involved in your community and still like get good grades. So just like take GEs that like, you know, like environmental GEs, history GEs that are like low impact and like are just like easier. There's this thing called broomwalk.com when you can Google your class and the professor and see like the grading scale, how well like people have done in the past or like the workload of the class. So that's like a good resource to use. Can you start a cluster during summer session? No, no, you cannot. Um, since it's like a whole class and it runs throughout the year, you can only start it your fall quarter. And also I wouldn't recommend it for the fall because like, as I said, you want to take something that's like a little lighter in like work course if you're like doing policy or something like that if you want to get ahead just like get rid of some ge's what is the best dorm style and meal plan for freshmen um well for dorms a lot of people say like the communal pe the dorms the communal baths are the most social be just because like there's more people and you get to talk to more people in the hallways and there's like people go to more events and it's just like more centered so a lot of people recommend those, but as I said, I was in a, I was in River Vista, so we have like shared bath. Yeah, it's like a shared bath. The rooms are a little bigger. I liked it. It was like a little more spacious. Still great for freshmen. And the meal plan, I'll recommend 14P, just because that's like the most common one. And the P really helps you like just like not waste any swipes. And again, if you go home, you can just like collect your swipes and not lose any of them. What's the process if you want to go to your family's house over the weekend? Um, no, not at all. You can just leave. Like, as long as... Yeah, you can just leave. There's no one you have to tell at all. Um, but, like, if you're leaving a lot, that's why I recommend you get, like, a P, like, a premium meal plan. Because then if you are going home a lot, you don't want to, like, have your swipes go to waste. So they just roll over to the next week and you can use them. When you have P, you can swipe other people into the dining halls as well. So if like someone's running low in swipes or like someone doesn't live on the hill anymore and wants to eat at the dining hall, you can swipe them with P. With regular, you cannot use more than one swipe per meal period. What is the hazing in pre law frats like? There is no hazing in professional fraternities. So what happens when you pledge is more of like a formative environment and would like they teach you, like you're obviously not part of like the active body yet but it's more of like a formative process rather than hazing. Yeah, there's no hazing allowed and no hazing is enforced. Uh, what is a premium meal plan? Do with the swipes roll over. On quarters to no. The quarters, after like the quarter ends, it like resets. So you wanna use all your swipes before. It's like get a lot of takeout and they also have like, oh, use like 20 swipes to buy like a box of like granola bars and stuff like that. So they don't roll over to the next quarter. The pool's available near the dorms. Um, so near the dorms, we have Sunset Rec. Um, and we have, there's also like volleyball courts, there's a family sized pool, and there's like a swim, there's like three pools that are in Sunset Rec, that it's like right by the dorms. And they're on campus, there's like three more. But Sunset Rec is the one that's like right by the dorms, and there's like three different pools. How many people can you swipe in? Um, as long as you have P, you can use as many swipes as you want. So it doesn't matter how many people, you, if you have P, you can swipe them all. As long as like you want to use all your swipes, like go for it. 
Can you join a frat if you're a transfer into UCLA? Absolutely. Um, we have a lot of transfers in our frat. And I think for transfers, joining your first quarter is really good because you find your people right away and you find all the resources you need right away as well. So like people that are in the frat can like guide you, especially like as you're new and you're already in your third year at UCLA. It's really like easy to get lost, but absolutely you can rush any professional frat and you can get in as a transfer, of course. Um, for the meal plans, does each swipe count as a meal? Um, yeah, so it's not like money based. You get like 19 swipes. So yeah, each swipe is like one meal. You can get like for one swipe, if you go into a sit in dining hall, you can get as much food as you want for one swipe. Study tips, habits I've developed at UCLA. Um, for me, what I like to do is I, when I have like really long readings, I would usually read the introduction, <laughs> then the conclusion, and then read in between the lines. When you like don't just need like some sort of information or something for your essay and you don't have time to read the whole thing, definitely just go intro conclusion and skim the middle and you'll have the gist of what the thing is about, but also get like real examples from the middle. And I think that's one of like the best hacks I've ever like learned here. Oh, that's amazing. Someone went to UCLA for the summer from Brazil. That's super cool. You see, it doesn't have a nutritional science major. Food nutrition. There's a food nutrition, I believe, major or minor now. I think it's new. I think it's not like a nutrition major, but I'm pretty sure there's something similar to that realm you're talking about. Um, that's pretty much new. So there's like a food nutrition something. There's also this class called Physi Physiological Science 5, which teaches you about like the food, what it happens like when you like intake and stuff like that. So there's like a lot of opportunities to learn about that. I believe they only roll over if you have premiere. Yeah, they only roll over if you have P, but not, they only roll over through the weeks. When the quarter is over, they like they reset for the next quarter. But yeah, if you have a regular meal plan, you can just use one swipe every meal, like meal period. And then, yeah, they don't roll over. If you don't use your swipes, you lose them. Yeah. What causes to take first year for pre-law? So as a policy major, for my first year, I believe I took, well, you take like the prereqs for poli sci. So there's some classes that you have to take before you start taking like upper division classes. So you take like the introduction to all of, so, okay, let me explain this right. Um, there's a lot of concentrations you can choose from for poli sci, but you don't choose until you're done with your prereqs. So the prereqs are, there's like one for each concentration. So it's like um, international relations, American politics, um, like strategy, and there's, there's like a couple others. But once you take five out of the six or four out of the five, you get to concentrate in a specific, in the one you choose. So I chose international relations. And then you can start taking classes that are more like specific to what you want to study. Study abroad. Um, I did not study abroad, but it is a really good program. There's a lot of like financial opportunities you can take. Um, for policy majors, I do recommend UCDC, even though it's just like in the States, but you still get to go a quarter to Washington DC and spend time with like politicians, researchers, and just do your own research and just spend it in like Washington. You make a lot of connections. You can get jobs like for post-grad if you just like really bonded with someone and really made that like connection. I think UCDC is one of the best things offered for like pre-law students at UCLA. We see UCLA has a lot of resources and counselors, professors that care. Personally, I've had a very like pretty good experience with my professors and counselors. So as I said, my counselors really helped me like plan out my four years at UCLA, kind of like what classes I like should take or like what I was interested in. And the professors just go to office hours. I promise you, if you go to office hours um, and you like talk to your professor, even like if you like research them before and like learn what they're most interested in and what their research is and you start talking to them, definitely, they definitely care. Like even if you're so interested in their research, they can make you like a research assistant. So it's like, yeah, definitely. They definitely care. It's more of you putting in the effort to get to know them and to ask for their help and letters of break. Absolutely. 
one of the best opportunities for pre-law students. Oh, it's the UCGC program. So it's a quarter in Washington, D.C. And you get to go and it's like study abroad, like in the States. But it's mostly for like people interested in politics or like advocacy. And you get to do your own research and stuff like that. It's really convenient. It's really good. And I think it's one of the best things. Are policy prereqs hard? Um, international relations major. Oh, okay. So policy recs, like prereqs are not very hard. I think they're just to like introduce you to the concepts. There's not an international relations major, but there is a concentration in policy that is international relations. And that's what I'm doing. So the major is not there, but it's under policy. So definitely, I would recommend that. It's the policy 20. That's a prereq for international law. And you definitely learn about just like different countries, like exchange rates and all that kind of stuff. That's like really useful if you're really into that. The studying abroad cost extra. I don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure it's like the same money you would pay for here. Plus, like, I guess some extra costs. But there's a lot of financial programs that help you for study abroad. Like all your like financial help you already get like rolls over to the study abroad programs and they have like extra opportunities for it. So definitely like they can help you like make a plan financially. That's like similar to the one you have at school. Studying abroad is a hard thing to get into. No, definitely not. Like you just have to do the research and like kind of like apply to it. But no, it's not hard to get into it. You just have to like actually know where you want to go, what you want to do and then just apply for it. It's not that hard. Random rooming. I did random rooming my first two years and it worked out pretty well. I never had any like conflict or like struggle. I got along with my roommates pretty well. Um, it was not until my third year that I actually like chose my roommates and we actually just got like an extra person because we were six in the suites and it worked out pretty fine. Like I've never had like a problem but if you have like a preference of someone like you want, like go for it. But I think it's really great to like meet new people and like know what they're doing and what they're involved in. Like definitely a great idea. Like I never had any problems with it. Freshman silver program this year. I, it's probably gonna be online. That's what I've like been hearing. I don't know anything more about it and like specifics, but it's most likely gonna be online according to me. Have you ever not been able to get a class that you needed? Um, yes, yes, I've, I've struggled with that. Um, but what you can do, there's like a lot of classes you can take. Like if you have one requirement, they give you about 50 plus options to take a class you need. So it might not be the class you want to want. For poli sci, like the people that struggle the most to not get classes, I would say it's like more pre-med based people because they need to take a series of classes for poli sci majors and like sociology and stuff like that. You don't need to take classes in any particular order. So it's very easy to just just take a different class or talk to your professor or department if you really, really need that class. For example, to graduate or just like to take a different class, you can talk to your department and if it's available, they can just enroll you. Even to your professor, if they have a, like a wait list, you can just talk to them and they can give you a little PT number that's gonna help you get in the class. But since there's no specific order, you can take pretty much any any other class. Is it easy to make friends at UCLA? Um, yeah, definitely. There's so many clubs. What I would say is just get involved. If you like put yourself out of your comfort zone, and just meet new people, different clubs, um, classes, anything like that. Like there's more than a thousand clubs here. So it's definitely easy to make friends at UCLA. Just get involved and put yourself out there and you'll be completely fine. How many math science classes have you taken? Um, not many, not at all. Um, I think you have to take a stats class. So I took stats 10, but it's really like the most basic form of math. So of like statistics, so it's really easy. So that's probably the only math class I've ever taken. And then I took like one science class and it was like physiological science. So it wasn't really like actual science or equations. It was just like learning about like biology and like the body and stuff like that it was i don't really take you don't really need to take any of those classes um when did you join pre frat um i joined my sophomore year so i pledged my sophomore year spring quarter um if i honestly if i go back i would do it a little sooner like sophomore year fall quarter 
just because I really liked it. And I think the more time you spend in it, the more involved you get and the more opportunities you know about and like you get to meet more people. Is general atmosphere of UCLA very studious? Do people take academics seriously? There's definitely a great balance at UCLA between academics and social life. So you can still be very involved in clubs and organizations and like do social gatherings for like in your clubs and all that and still be very competitive. Like, yes, people do take their academics very seriously. And I recommend like if you're struggling with your academics, put like the clubs aside. But people here find a really great balance of doing both. And it's definitely very manageable. Uh, is it hard for kids with special needs to do well in class? Um, I, I don't know like firsthand, but there's a lot of accommodations that UCLA gives um, people that need like special accommodations, like extra time or just like, there's a lot of stuff. So there's like a special center. We will give the name of that. Um, that's specifically for students that have like special needs. So there's like a whole sector that focuses on that. What clubs are you in? Um, so I'm in my pre-law frat that actually takes a lot of my time. I'm in media team as well. I'm part of this club called Society of Imperial Valley Bruins because I'm from the Imperial Valley right by the border of like Mexico and, and California. So we just like bring kids from our hometown and like help them to get into like, not specifically UCLA, but like colleges in general. So I'm in like three main ones right now. <laughs> Thank you. From a policy major, um, how to learn what classes I'll take my freshman year. Um, so if you already get like your, you go to sign into my UCLA, go to your study list, or just go into my UCLA, at the top you can see something that says my audit, and it gives you a list of all the classes you need as a policy major, like all the classes. So just ask for your audit report, and it will take you right through that. Um, Center, Center for Accessible Education. Thank you, Royce. Yeah, that is it. So if you have any special needs and you need special accommodation, the Center for Accessible Education is going to help you with that. Do you think that pause like classes are manageable with a quarter system? Absolutely, like 100%. So as I'm saying, like they're not really hard classes. They're more of time consuming in terms of like reading and writing. But like if you manage your time and don't procrastinate writing essays or like reading, it's completely manageable. How do you join media team? Um, so we put out applications. Just make sure to be following UCLA housing and we're putting out um, applications applications soon for next year so definitely be on the lookout they're gonna be posted on our on our webpage like instagram facebook probably so just be on the lookout and you'll probably catch them how hard is the double major um as a policy major it's not hard at all like most people at ucla usually have a double major double minor or even like double major and a minor like it's just how well you manage your time. But if you wanna like double major in some instances, if you don't wanna do summer sessions, you have to take four classes a quarter when it's usually three, like at least you take three, but it's really manageable to do four classes. So it's definitely not that hard. What are the expenses for double majoring? Like it's like, as I said, you just learn more. There's nothing like extra about it. Um, I do have a minor, I'm minoring in chicken egg studies. So I just wanted to learn more about like my culture and meet more people that were like interested in like the same thing with different experiences. So that's what I did. I was gonna major, but I did and I decided not to like double major, but like I could have like and still graduated in four years. So it's definitely something you could do. Uh, you have a major right now, but you wanna pursue something else. Can I change my major during orientation? Absolutely, yes. You can change your major at any point in your UCLA career. Um, so you just go to like your department or the department you wanna join and ask them to like change, to like change your major. So yeah, definitely you can do it during orientation or if you wanna wait like one quarter and then change it, like absolutely, you can change it anytime and ask many times as you want. If you don't have a major, I mean, that's kind of up to you, like what you're interested in. You can start doing, like you can still be undecided and just take like general education classes. And once you take those, like you can kind of see what you like and decide to major in something. So I say just start doing GEs and see what you like. And after that, like just go from there. <laughs> of course, no problem. Um, it's your grade mainly weighed, uh, weighted on essays. Um, 
Yes. I would say like just because most most of the midterms and finals are essays, like essay based. So a lot of your grade goes into essays, but there's also like participation, discussion, and like assignments. Some classes are have midterms and finals that are not essays, but it's very heavily based on essays. So yeah. Um, no, I'm not sure about the honors program, but we can, you can email housing and we'll try to answer your questions. Clusters, yeah, as I said before, clusters for me, it's a great way to get like rid of GEs and just, just if you want to take that class or that like main like topic for three quarters, I would absolutely recommend it. Like it takes care of a lot of GEs that you don't have to take later on. Public affairs get hard. Um, to change your major, you just go to like, the like the department of public affairs and tell them you want to change your major or to the poli sci major and they're literally change it for you like it's a really easy process is it hard well i've never taken a public affairs class but i have a lot of friends that if you like the topic just absolutely go for it it's not hard at all and i think it's really good to like do what you like is your work graded by professors or tas um some classes don't have tas so the professor grades it but for most prereqs your TA does the, the grading, yeah. You can still go to your professor for office hours, but if you go to your TA, since they're the ones that grade your papers, they have really strict guidelines, though, by the professor. So I think that's, like, what's really helpful. But, yeah, it's mostly TAs. GE is the same for everybody. Um, well, it depends. It's kind of the same, but it does depend on your major. Just because there's some GEs, for example, I don't... I believe science, like, pre-med students don't have to take, like, science GEs because they're really covering it but it's pretty much like the same but yeah they definitely i think they do change depending on your major how's the average classroom atmosphere less strict or more strict at ucla um i think it really depends because when you're like a freshman the classrooms are like really big there's like 400 students in a class like 300 um but i feel like you can still go to your professor during office hours like not a lot of people go so i think it's like a great way to like bond with your professor um, are they strict? Like, some professors don't allow, like, electronics and stuff like that. But overall, it's a really nice atmosphere. Like, they just want to engage with the students. What about work-study? Oh, there's a lot of opportunities for work-study on the Hill. Um, so many. You have, like, the law school. There's a lot of um, ASUCLA. So that's, like, things um, on campus, like coffee shops. Um, you can work for, like, a, what is it? FYE, so first-year... Like, there's a lot of programs, I promise you, that are, like, really good with work-study. There's, like, a webpage, too, in, like, my UCLA that you can go to for... That you can do, like, campus jobs, and then you can see all the jobs that are available. It's really good. Uh, are we allowed to smoke or drinks in the dorms? No. Um, no, you're not allowed. Those, it's a smoke-free and, like, substance-free environment. So, if you... Like, if someone sees you or, like, your RA sees you with it, like you're probably gonna get in trouble, yeah. Those are not allowed at all. So, no. Um, so we're running out of time. Thank you for everyone that tuned in. I hope I answered most of your questions. This live stream is gonna be posted on YouTube and it's gonna be on the story if you wanna go over it again. Um, you can also email UCLA Housing at housing.ucla.edu if you have any more questions and we'll try to answer it as best as we can. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye, guys.